Hello, Coronado, beloved neighbors. Thank you for coming to our Mother's Day cooking class today. I'm Laura Plum, the author of Ayurveda Cooking for Beginners, and I'm here with my friend Tatum Ware. Tatum is a really great cook herself, and... At home, we like to eat all natural, super healthy, just because that's what my mom's taught me, and my whole family thinks that that's the best way to do things. So today, we are going to show you a Mother's Day brunch, the Ayurveda way. I'll tell you a little bit about Ayurveda as we get going, but first, let me tease your appetite. We're going to have curried spinach nibbles, we're going to have a beautiful green spring salad, and then we're going to finish it off with dessert. We're going to have oatmeal, almond butter, chocolate chip brownies, and those are completely gluten-free and vegan. Everything here today is gluten-free as well, in case anyone in your family does have any sort of intolerances. And not only that, but we're going to really pepper up things with flowers and with the beauty of spring. Everything today has come from the Coronado Farmers Market, so a shout out to our local farmers. And really this is a celebration of mother, your mother, our mothers, your wonderful mother, my wonderful mother, but also Mother Earth and Mother Nature. And that really is what Ayurveda is. Ayurveda is the science of nature and its regenerative capacity. It's a reminder that we are all nature, and therefore we have that regenerative capacity within us. What do I mean by regenerative? Spring is the best time to see that nature every year comes back. It recycles, it returns, it regenerates. And the invitation in Ayurveda is to recognize you have that same capacity in you. So if you're feeling imbalanced, if you're feeling a little lethargic, brain fog, and even some more imbalance of certain diseases, with Ayurveda we can address them with nature's medicine, with food, with herbs, with different kinds of practices. So today is just a little taste of Ayurveda and how we work with Ayurveda in the kitchen. Ready to start? Yep. Awesome. So first, let's pull the hair back, get our aprons going. We've got our towels. We've got everything here measured out. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our curried spinach nibbles. This is a little bit like uh, a souffle, but it's not a souffle. We're going to use lots and lots of spinach. It's two pounds of fresh spinach and only three eggs. So it's definitely more spinach than eggs. We've got a little bit of Parmesan cheese, some spring onion, and we're going to make it with some curry powder. This is one of my favorite curry blends. And just to remind you that spices are not meant to be dried and sitting on our shelves for many, many years. Spices come from bark and flowers and seeds, and they should be really, really fresh. So either grind your own spice or purchase spices from a really well-trusted uh, supplier. This one is really wonderful. I love it. So I've got a good curry. If you don't love curry, no problem. You can use an Italian blend of spices, a French blend of spices, whatever is your favorite. In fact, in here in Coronado, I've been able to pick up some really beautiful spices from our local suppliers. And the olive oil shop has it, Vomfoss has it. So that this is a Dijon dill and rosemary blend, which would also be delicious in here. So any spice that you love will work. The important thing is we're using two and a half tablespoons of spice, so it really needs it to cut the heaviness of the eggs in the cream. So in terms of cream, we're using a full fat yogurt. So this is going to be something that's going to be really strong and strengthening. So in Ayurveda, we understand that there are six categories of tastes. Do you remember your six tastes? I remember sweet. You remember sweet? Right. So sweet is the primary taste. That's what builds bulk. That is what actually strengthens and feeds the tissues. Sweet is what we mostly eat. It's anything from rice, all the different grains, root vegetables, meats. Uh, fruit, of course, is sweet. So we don't mean processed sugar, but we need, mean the foods that are generally strengthening. There's also sour, salty, pungent, astringent, and bitter. And in any meal in Ayurveda, we're looking to get all six tastes. And the reason we want all six tastes is because that's what's going to satisfy you, right? All six tastes will feed all of you. And so in this particular dish, we've got the taste of sweet, we've got the eggs, we've got the cream, we've got the cheese. We've also got the astringent and the bitter from the spinach, pungent from our spring onions, and we're going to add some salt, of course, and then we're going to top it all off at the end with some sour. The yogurt is a little sour, right? Anything fermented has some sour to it. We've got, for the topping, we've got some creme fraiche, a little bit of mustard. So we're going to have all six tastes in this one dish. But we're also going to complement it with a salad that is astringent and bitter. And those tastes are very purifying, very cleansing. And then we're going to finish it with some sweet because Mama is so sweet and we want to really thank her for our life. Yeah. Don't you think? Yes. We've got so much to thank our mothers for. So it's really an honor to be here to be able to celebrate our mothers. I just also wanted to point out in the back here, we have beautiful flowers, fruit, 
and various things also from our farmer's market and some things from my own garden. Spring is such a beautiful time to really get out into your garden and pluck the fresh aromatic herbs. Do you do some of that? Do you guys have an, we a have garden? an herb garden? You have an herb garden, yeah. And it's so wonderful. You could put it in your water, right? A little bit of rosemary in your water or mint in your water. Rosemary is slightly heating, mint is slightly cooling. So you're working with the energies of nature to balance what's happening this season. Now let me just give you one more clue about Ayurveda and then we're going to proceed to cooking. Ayurveda is based on the idea that there's five elements in nature and those five elements are dynamic and those five elements are all in us. Do you remember this part? Right. So can we remember those five elements that are in us and everywhere in nature? One water, of them. Water, earth, earth fire, fire, air, air what do we look up to at the night sky? Oh, um, stars? S yeah, in space, right? The stars the that are there in space. And all of these elements in nature have an action upon us. So space is vast, air is moving, fire is digesting and transforming, water is a little bit grounding, it's lubricating. What was that? Moving. Moving, so it's fluid. And earth is stable and grounding. And so when we have all six tastes, we feed all five elements. And that's true for our physical body as well as our mental body. So that's a really beautiful thing. And then depending on how you feel, you can lean into foods that are a little bit more grounding or a little bit more purifying, foods that are a little bit more light or foods that are a little bit more lubricating, hydrating, and will help the joints and the dry skin, etc. So one more thing is this is the season, we've mentioned it a few times, of spring. And what happens in spring? Well, in Coronado, we have a term, right? May, gray, June, gloom. And sometimes that starts in April, and sometimes that goes until July. I wish we could have a rhyme. We need to figure out a rhyme for the April. <laughs> and of course, even though it can be a really beautiful day, Mother's Day may be a beautiful, clear sky and beautiful day, still generally in the springtime, there's more of one element. So if we think May, gray, June, gloom, what are we talking about? We're talking about a little bit more of the water element. Spring is the season when the water element is dominant. And that's true if you're in Boston, that's true if you're in Chicago, that's true if you're in Colorado where the mountain snow is melting and the rivers are swelling. It's true in places where there's lots more rain in the spring and it's true here where we get that coastal fog. So there are days, even though we're excited about the flowers, we're excited to go out and play with our friends, uh, it's also a time when there can be some heaviness and the characteristics of spring are heavy wet and cool. So that's why nature in her infinite intelligence and love, just like a mother, gives us the foods that will balance. The foods of spring tend to be warm or pungent, heating, like mustard greens, uh, radishes, watercress. They tend to be bitter, so they're purifying. They lighten us up after winter stagnation. And so it's bitter, astringent, and pungent are the main foods wild onions, wild leeks, wild garlic, and all of these beautiful things that we have here in front of you, including mustard uh, microgreens and some basil microgreens. Basil also is a great spice, a great aromatic herb for springtime because it has a little bit of heat to it. But the other thing that spring does is it gives us the beauty of flowers. We have zucchini squash flowers here that are so gorgeous, just reminding us it's time to come out and play. It's time to feel free again. It's time to feel alive again. And that's what we're thanking our mothers for on Mother's Day. And that's what we're cooking for today. So let's now really get started. Would you help that's me good. with this? Yes. Do we want a, a little towel, a dish towel over the shoulder maybe, just in case our hands get dirty? That's a good idea. Okay. So we've got our recipe here so we know what we're doing. We'll push this to the side. The first thing that we're going to do with the curried spinach nibbles and you can serve these as little bites. They're great as appetizers. They're great for a party. They can also be larger for an actual brunch or a lunch on your table. This is also really easy to carry over to somebody. And I've taken this to people as gifts or times when people are dealing with stuff and they don't feel like cooking. I'll just drop this at the front door. This is a great all-round uh, dish for people. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our spinach. You need to make sure that it's very well cleaned. And then we're going to put it in a large pot little teeny bit of water, you know, like two tablespoons of water. Put that up on a medium height on your stove and then we're going to just very gently blanch that. We're just going to wilt the spinach. So once we have the spinach blanched and it's 
straining in a colander over the sink, then you've got, you're ready for the next step. So I'm going to have you do this step. Good. And what we're going to need here is some one and a quarter cup almond flour. So you can put that in there. I'm going to give you a spoon. I brought my special, I mean, I'm going to give you a fork. I brought my special fork today. This is a fork from the Hotel Dell that I got from Coronado Vintage from an estate sale. Promise they didn't steal it. That was an estate that was able to purchase when the Coronado Hotel Dell was refurbishing. So we'll just gently give that a stir to break up any clumps. Next we're going to add the salt. This is already measured out for one teaspoon. So you can add the teaspoon salt. We're going to add some fresh cracked black pepper. And then sure, you can go ahead and take that. That's the baking powder. So we have a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And then remember I said we have got a lot of curry. And this is my favorite curry powder of the moment. Good. So that's a blend of curry. And that really is good with eggs. So we're going to just give that a stir. So once that's all mixed together, then we can do, that's the dry bowl. Now we'll do the wet bowl. And in here, would you like to do it? Sure. Okay. We're going to crack three eggs. And then we're going to add the one cup full fat yogurt. Like to do that? Sure. And while you do that, I'm going to pull up our cheese. So we're adding half of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. I didn't have enough Parmesan. So I went to the farmer's market, and from the cheese guy, I got some black pepper jack. So any dry, strongish cheese will work. Beautiful. And this one. And then let's use this same Hotel Del fork for mixing that. Finally, we're going to add spring onions. Shall I go ahead and pour that in while you stir? Yeah. So that's coming in. Pretty, pretty onions. Be sure it's spring onions or even chives. We don't want full onion. We don't want it to be that strong. It just gives us a bite of something refreshing as we're biting in. So that's good. We stir that up. We've got these two. We're going to add this dry to the wet. Then we're going to add the spinach and we're putting it in the oven. It's that simple. Perfect. And this is a really forgiving recipe too because it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It can still be a little clumpy. Wonderful. As you're stirring it, I'm seeing these beautiful colors. Can we just show everyone this gorgeous oh, color? So it's really orange because of the curry blend, but also eggs and the egg yolk. And then with that green, and now we're going to add spinach. It's just such a beautiful color, isn't it? I agree. Mm. Let's go get our spinach. Now remember we start with two pounds of spinach, so it's a lot of spinach, but of course spinach really cooks down. So you're just going to quickly blanch the spinach, you've done that in the beginning, and then you're leaving it over the sink to strain. Then you're going to go and wrap it in a dish towel, squeeze the dish towel, get rid of all excess water. Any excess water is going to really ruin, you're going to end up with a soggy spinach nibble. So squeeze really well and then put the spinach onto a cutting board and just give it a good quick chop. We don't want any loose strings that would get in our teeth when we're eating the dish later. So we just stir in the spinach and then you're going to, your oven's already set to 375. Take a baking tray, just your standard baking, 8x8. Put some ghee in it and or parchment paper or butter or whatever your favorite oil is and you just pour this in. Spread it to the edges put it in your oven, center rack, and you're going to cook it for 25 to 30 minutes. One thing I do want to say about cooking this is you want to, it's just like a cake. If you put a toothpick in the middle and it comes out clean, it's done. Don't overcook it, okay? Because you want it to be moist. All that spinach is going to keep it very moist. The almond flour that we added gives it some structure. The eggs bind, and this is pure deliciousness. So let's go ahead and put it in the oven, shall we? So while that's baking, we'll start on our dessert, which is the oatmeal, almond butter, chocolate chip brownies. These don't have eggs, so they could even be eaten raw. It could be like a cookie dough, mm -hmm. if people like that. And you can cook them from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. It's up to you. But whenever I make these, people are always asking for more. So it's a really great family pleaser. And I think it's really important to make something sweet for mom. You know, this is a day to really go all out, I think. So we're going to start by putting... This is coconut sugar. Coconut sugar, by the way, is lower glycemic. So it's really not bad white processed sugar. So let's have you go ahead and do that. And this, again, it has no gluten. 
It has no dairy, so this is a great recipe for people who might have some digestive intolerances. So to that, we're going to add one cup of almond butter. And I picked up the almonds and the almond butter from the farmer's market from California Fresh Almonds. So we're going to add that. And then we're also going to add a bit of vanilla extract. So we stir that together. At first, it's going to seem a little bit implausible, if not impossible. But it will work. It will stir. And if your, your butter, you can also use peanut butter with this. You can use creamy butter, almond butter, or chunky almond butter creamy peanut butter or chunky, you know, it's, it works. In this larger bowl, we're going to add the dry ingredients. We have a cup and a half of oat flour. Now, one of the things that I think is really a joy to do is to mill, so to speak, your own oat flour, which is to take either steel cut oats or the flaked oats and dry straight out of the package. You just put them into your blender and turn it into a powder, and now you have oat flour. So that's a simple thing to do. Most of us have oats at home. You don't have to go out and buy special flour. A cup and a half of oat flour, and then to which we're gonna add the other dry ingredients, the baking powder. This one uses a good amount of baking powder, about a teaspoon and a half, but then only about half to a teaspoon of rock salt, pink salt, any mineral salt, sea salt that you like. Okay, and then we're gonna stir this one and then we add straight in the almond butter mixture. Good. Good. And again, at first, these are going to look like, oh, it's not going to want to mix together. But it will, I promise. And it's not that hard. So we're going to give it a little bit of elbow here. And then what's going to make it really work is we're going to add almond milk. Do you want to do that for us? So... This is going to help a lot. Now, you can wait till everything's stirred together, but our almond butter is pretty thick and it doesn't want to melt in, so we're going to need that liquid to help us here. Now, with chocolate chips, the recipe calls for about half a cup. You can add as much or as many as you like. So we're going to add a few handfuls, right? I like dark chocolate. I buy an organic dark chocolate here in town. So then we're going to add a few handfuls. I think we could add three or four handfuls. Maybe we'll start with two. And you always want to save a few of your chocolate chips to put on the top. Yeah, I think this will be enough. Just two, two and a half handfuls. So you can go ahead and put those in when you're ready. Beautiful. See, it doesn't really need that much. So oat flour, almond butter, chocolate chip, brownies. So once this is stirred up, we just put this in the baking tray, lined with a piece of parchment paper. And this is going into the oven at 350 degrees. So we've already got something in the oven at 375. You could put it in at 375, but then don't cook it as long. And, but normally it goes in at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take care of that, put it in the oven. And while this is cooking, we'll get our salad ready. Okay, there you go, my dear. One of the things I love to do, especially in the spring, is to go to the farmer's market and just see what they have. Especially when it comes to salad, I always think ahead of time what kind of a salad to make, but then it's so beautiful to show up at the farmer's market and just see what's available and work with what's really fresh. Do you do that sometimes? Yeah, I love going to the farmer's market. Isn't it fun? Yeah. I love talking to the farmers. It's so interesting. It's, a, it's so great. I love to see what they've got, and they're such lovely people. Mm -hmm. So yesterday's farmer's market, we had fresh peas, and they look like this. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> but we husked these peas this morning to, to get a bowl of really fresh garden peas. English peas, also called sweet peas. And if you open them, they're so gorgeous. Six, seven, eight peas in a pod. Eight peas in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> so these are really easy to do. It takes 10 minutes. You can do it with a friend as you're chatting over a conversation. Literally, you're just going to take your thumb down the middle, break it off there, little stem there, and you've liberated your peas. I also picked up some really beautiful fresh radish. There were some whites, reds, purples, and I did a quick pickle on these. I just added some warm water, a little bit of honey, lots of salt, and some apple cider vinegar. Will you lift that apple cider vinegar up and let's show everyone. Apple cider vinegar you can also get at the f farmer's market. So apple cider vinegar, of course, is a fermented, and it's a sour, and it sours up the radish. Even if you don't think you like radish, try these, because they're really good, and they'll add a nice crunch to the salad. They also naturally are pungent. So now we've got pungent, salty, sour in our salad. And then another thing we're going to get for the bitter is dandelion. Have you seen fresh dandelion at the market? I didn't know you could eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Very 
candy. <laughs> so you can eat dandelion. You could actually eat it off your garden, if your front grass, if you have some. I'm going to give you a little taste, and you tell me what you think. It's, I won't say what it is until she tastes it, because we'll see if she <laughs> likes it. It is really bitter. It's bitter. But the, that's good, because bitter is what purifies. Bitter is antibacterial, often antiviral. We want some bitter, especially in the springtime but not too much. So if we can just chop up a little bit of this spinach, I would chop off these tops right about there and then chop those real small so it blends in with the other lettuces. In order to balance the bitter, I got some nice, what I call a sweet lettuce, but it's a, a butter lettuce. This is more of a summer lettuce really, but this was fresh in the market. And this is a red butter lettuce. And then this was just too gorgeous to pass up. Look at this gorgeous lettuce, which is also, they told me, a butter lettuce but shaped like a rose. And again, we're eating flowers, we're celebrating mother, so let's bring in the rose and the flowers and the sweetness. Also, what we're gonna add is a little bit of cilantro, you could add parsley, mint, I just love a good hearty handful of fresh aromatic herbs right in the salad. And then we have these gorgeous squash flowers, the zucchini and the flower that grows in the end. A lot of people are familiar with these fried and then stuffed with some goat cheese. We're not going to do that today. We're going to have the flour as part of our beautiful salad. And we're just going to chop very thinly the zucchini and have that as a nice crunch as well. Then the only last thing that we've got that I wanted to add are some microgreens, which are packed with nutrition, good in fiber. Look how simple and fun and fresh. And the nice thing is you can eat as you go. Have a little taste as Tatum has tasted a few things. <laughs> and then I'm going to break into our beautiful rose lettuce. It's not called rose lettuce, but look how fresh and clean that is. And I'm going to put that in the bottom here. Okay, so we've got a little bed. I'll put a few more in the other way. Fill in the holes. And then, good, let's take the zucchini. Maybe a little bit, not in the center. We'll put the peas really in the center. Maybe we should do the peas first. Let me get the peas in here. Try to keep them in the center. And the zucchini we'll put around to the extent that we can. <laughs> no mistakes in cooking. It's all going to end up delicious. Beautiful. Great. And then what I would do is I would, outside of the zucchini, put the dandelion, just sprinkling the dandelion. It's a darker green, so that might show up. And then with the microgreens, yeah, that's pretty. Look at that dark, rich green. Mm -hmm. You just look at it and you just know you're just feeding your body all the nutrients it needs. Just hello, hello nature. Mm -mm -mm. Gorgeous. Okay, so that's already beautiful with our greens. Then with the microgreens, we're just gonna clip them. Now they say to use the scissors to clip, but we can use our fingers. Why don't you work on the mustards and I'll work on the basils, we just want a, a few that I think we'll sprinkle. Whoops, we do need to tear the soil off. We don't want to bring that in too. Good. Maybe a little around the edges. Good. Beautiful. You can add edible flowers from your garden. Violets, squash blossoms, lavender, all beautiful. So let's, beautiful, here comes the purple, the violets from the garden. Isn't that so pretty? And this lavender on the side, lovely little treat all edible. Eating a flower, it's like we're actually taking in nature. It's gorgeous. This is the thing I love about Ayurveda. It's all about cultivating a relationship with nature and recognizing that nature wants to love you and to help you feel beautiful again. <laughs> what we're going to do with this is we're going to have a salad dressing that's going to squeeze in lemon or you could squeeze in a little nectarine, which, which is fresh now, a little salt and pepper, so olive oils that we get from here. And if you want, you can add a little bit of Dijon or a little bit of garlic powder. Then these beautiful radishes, they were, remember, red on the outside, white on the inside, but they were quick pickled. So that's gonna add this lovely pink to our salad. And you can spread these round. You can add as many as you like. It'll also give a nice refreshing bite. And then you've got this gorgeous salad with the colors of spring, pinks, violets, orangey yellow, and lots and lots of gorgeous green. So a salad a floral salad for your mother. The other thing is you can use some of this pickled radish juice, if you like, in the salad dressing, just about a tablespoon. 
Tatum is making our salad dressing. We're going to have that along the side to serve. And we're going to go pull out of the oven now, of course, our curried spinach nibbles and our oatmeal almond butter chocolate chip uh, brownies. And we'll set it all out here and show you what our table, our buffet table, will look like for Mother's Day. We've pulled the curried spinach nibbles out of the oven. And those can be served warm, but you can also let that cool to room temperature. Same, you want to let your brownies cool for about 10 minutes, and then you can cut them up and put them on a plate. We've got our beautiful salad and our salad dressing. How pretty is that with that pink radish vinegary at the bottom? Okay, so let's go ahead. How about I have you, do you want to cut? Sure. Let's cut slices, and I usually cut them into squares. Now these are really great, topped with a little creme fraiche. So creme fraiche is a lot like sour cream, but it's lighter and a little bit less sour. I've sprinkled a little dill on top of that. That's delicious. This could also be topped with a little aioli. You can make with fresh one clove garlic and some mayonnaise. And you can do it with a vegan mayonnaise if you like. Perfect. And then I also like to top it even further with a little Dijon mustard. And, and another thing I got at the farmer's market are these beautiful olives. So just going to tuck one in there. Do you want to try it? All right, my dear. See what you think. Be sure you get some of that creme fraiche in. So that is a, a cheat, by the way, if the eggs do end up getting overcooked. Add more creme fraiche. It really balances out. Is it good? It's so good. Do <laughs> <laughs> you think your mom will like it? She would love this. Oh, great. Okay. And your grandmother? Awesome. Yes. Good. I think my mom would like it too. I know she would be delighted with all those flowers. I want to thank my mother for giving me the love of cooking, as well as my aunt. And I want to thank all the children everywhere for letting us be mothers. And to everybody who has a mother, and to everybody who's going to be a mother or is a mother, happy, happy Mother's Day from Tatum and me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone.